regular season games and exclusive coverage of the World Series. NASN also brings you an exclusive lineup of college sports with live college football and basketball. And with a daily lineup of sports news, talk shows, highlights, and analysis, NASN is your channel for the very best in live North American sports. Visit NASN.com for scheduling news and information. Nice whistle, Dick. Coming up next, the Wendy's Halftime Show. Join Rich Eisen, Steve Mariucci, Deion Sanders, and Marshall Falk. They'll have first half highlights and analysis and a look ahead to tomorrow's games. Inside the uh, McAfee Coliseum in Oakland, following a career-long 72-yard punt by Dustin Colquitt, the Raiders are backed up on their own three-yard line. Given their propensity to turn over, they don't figure to take many chances here. And they don't with the first carry, Justin Fargus to the five, trying to get him some operating room before Jared Allen brings him down. They're running right up behind Robert Gallery, playing his first game in six weeks at the offensive left tackle spot, number 76, 83. Courtney Anderson coming off to the outside. Jared did a good job of pushing it back inside to his defense, but Robert Gallery, you know, they missed this son of a gun, and it, but in the missing him, Chaz Slaughter came on and did some good things playing in his backup role. Can we also de officially declare Gallery somewhat of a disappointment considering he was a number two pick? It says, you know, number two pick in the draft overall, you bet. Fargus yeah. being stopped as he crosses the line of scrimmage gets the Raiders out to the seven. And his, def his defense, though, he's had a number of offensive line coaches teaching him something a little bit different well, every year. Well, I understand year. that, Dick, but again, when you're the second guy overall in the draft, at that point, you should be a little farther along than Robert Gallery is, no? Yeah, you would think so. And there's a man who knows something about tackle play. <laughs> you bet. I mean, he can have all he's the offense. Hall of he Famer. can have all the line coaches he wants. He's yeah. got his head coach as a Hall of Famer. He can't play for him, though. Let's see how much Art Shell trusts Andrew Walter right here. Trust him to throw it over the middle and get the first down. Completing that one to Ronald Curry. Walter is no different than any other quarterback. When you let him get back, set his feet, keep people away from him, they'll throw the ball most of the time accurately. And because he's a big, tall guy, he has good vision, he has a good, strong arm, but he's not a good buying the second chance type guy. And so that's why he gets And he's a guy up. who's known some success. I mean, he wrote, rewrote the Pac 10 record book in terms of touchdown, touchdown. throws, threw for 85 touchdowns while he was at Arizona State. He'll throw on first down. Pump fakes to this side, and then dumps it off to Fargus. And Mr. Fargus meet Mr. Bell. Kendra Bell is playing well tonight. He was playing better this year all year than he did last year. Last year he played uh, sort of nursing a bad shoulder. He, he, this guy was an impact player at, at Pittsburgh, made the Pro Bowl one year. And, uh, but that shoulder bothered him. This year, he's playing much better and demonstrating that tonight, doing a nice job. That's one of those where Fargus was the safety valve, and actually, yeah. after he took the hit, probably thought that was a bad yeah. idea. On bad Walter's idea to check part. it down yeah. there. In the, in the right. Crockett is the up back. He blocks out. Fargus hey, gets it, and he's caught in the arms of Sammy Knight. Good, Phil. He was coming up there. They were running a zone blitz, bringing people to that side of the run that time and backing the defensive end up. You'll see right here, this defensive end is backing off, going to play zone, and they're bringing pressure on this side right into the run. Here they come. They... Sammy does a nice job of filling it. He doesn't miss many tackles when he's going downhill. Now, is that the inexperience of Walter not seeing that no, when they the... backed off? You don't even know if they had a checkoff system or if it showed early enough to check off. Okay. It leaves the Raiders and Walter with third and six. That's for Shard Lee, who's checked into the backfield behind him. And Walter will call the Raiders' second timeout of this half, just in advance of the uh, two-minute warning. As we noted, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs have very slim playoff hopes, but at least they are still in the playoff picture, and in that they have an edge on the Raiders. No question. The Chiefs come into here at um, seven and seven, and the scenario of them making it is uh, fairly complex. Suffice it to say, they would have to win out and get an awful lot of help. Need a lot of help, but you know, it, it has happened before. Maybe not as drastic or the amount of help that the Chiefs need, but you've got to play 
like the kids said even in the introduction. You We've take, got to make the playoffs. You take a look at that. The Broncos would actually be helped the most by the Chiefs losing because if it were simply the Broncos and the Chiefs getting the bid, um, the Chiefs hold the tiebreaker over the Broncos. Let's see what the Raiders came up with during the timeout. Walter throws and completes. This one to Curry again. It is Ronald Curry. Gets us to the two minute warning, keeps the Raider drive alive. They're marching, but they're trailing 10 to 6. Saturday Night Football on NFL Network is brought to you by Wendy's. Get in the middle of flavor, do Wendy's new double melt, and do what tastes right. Coors Light, Rocky Mountain Cold Refreshment, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. Invincible, starring Mark Wahlberg on Disney DVD, in stores now. Introducing Wendy's Double Melt. In the middle, there's pepper jack, cheddar sauce, bacon, and jalapenos. For flavor where it counts, do what tastes right. Still These guys look fantastic. I'm so proud. Join the Reebok Hockey Revolution. Visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. Pretty fine evening so far. Not a lot of yardage, but he's protected the ball. Completed yes, he, 11 of 14. Yes, he has. Had it knocked out in the one sack and got the ball knocked out and a turnover. But uh, in that, he's, he's shown real poise. He really has. He's getting the start tonight because Aaron Brooks has a bit of a stinger. Of course, they've basically shared duty all year long. We had a nice conversation with Brooks yesterday, didn't we? I was impressed with him. So he was wasn't I. pointing the finger at anybody. No. He was defending his coach, no, defending was, his teammates. He was terrific. He and, really was. And maybe a little upset with a few guys. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We asked him what happens when you call out guys for not trying. Yeah. And he gave us that blank stare, <laughs> which said, you know what? Some guys here just don't get it. Get it. First down for Walter and the Raiders. Walter throws this one a little bit behind Courtney Anderson. Derek Johnson on the coverage. We noted that the uh, Raiders have had trouble scoring uh, touchdowns this year. We can put trouble with a capital T. Look at that, will you? The Raider team, 12 touchdowns. Look at everybody else. Look at the individual. individuals that, the he, that they trailed. 31. Look at Larry's, 15. You know you're in trouble. I've never seen an offensive team with numbers like that. Uh, Unf unfortunately, neither is Art Shell. Yeah. Nor Al Davis. The Raiders trying to operate quickly, completing this side to Ronald Curry. He'll stop out of bounds. As you would expect of a team that has only scored 12 touchdowns all year long, take a look at this number. 70, 70 offensive, offensive plays 70 offensive per stats. touchdown. Now, to give you an idea, let's put that in some perspective. The NFL average is 30. Right, and San Diego Chargers was one every 17. Yeah, <laughs> they've done 70. One touchdown every 70 plays. You can't win like that. No. You can't even be competitive like that. Walter trying to keep the drive alive. Completes again to Curry. He likes Curry tonight. Curry getting it back close to midfield before well, going out of bounds. Well, he comes into the game, their leading receiver. You know, and he's been stepping up and growing. As you said, a converted quarterback out of college. A smooth, gifted athlete. Played on the basketball team as well at North Carolina. So he's, he's a gifted athlete. Mark Loomis, our producer, just pointed out there they're halfway <laughs> towards their 70 for uh, for the touchdown. They've got 33 offensive plays. Of course, it remains to be seen if they can put up the six. Walter will throw again. Losing his footing and losing the ball. It's free, and Jared Allen makes the recovery. His second fumble recovery of the night. It was Allen who knocked it loose and Jared seemed Allen's to come up with it. Jared Allen is very good at knocking the ball loose. He's done it a number of times uh, uh, this year and, and in the past. But the, and this has been this has been Walter's problem all year long. He's just been too casual with the football. He's got it up there in his right hand now. See now he's got oh he slipped too and that hurt him. That hurt him. He it was regaining his balance and then cocking to throw. Seeing that arm goes out there to gain balance and here comes Jared Allen. 
He's such a persistent guy. Jared Allen will never quit. He beats Gallery inside on a nice little move. Big that's time his, that's his sixth fumble recovery of the year. He's got two tonight. Jared Allen with a big night has put the Chiefs in business at the 37-yard line of the Raiders. One and a half minutes to play in the half. This is Johnson with some running room, crossing the 25 and fighting his way to the 20-yard line. The clock continues to tick. They used a little pump draw. The quarterback, Trent Green, stepped up, faked the pass, then handed off. What that does is distract the linebacker who's looking past and allows also blockers to climb on it at that time. And there's what we talked about earlier, giving the offense a short field. Raiders have had to operate all year long. That's Sammy Parker catching this one to the 12-yard line. Throwing it over there on Asamoah. The and, uh, Chiefs in no big hurry. They still have two timeouts. timeouts. Green will throw wide. Gonzalez. Namdi Asmawa pushing him out on the far side. They're throwing a lot over there for a guy that's picked off the ball seven times this year. You know? Well, seven times this year, but none until this year. I know it. He's really come on strong. Trent is back in rhythm right now. You notice that? And again, we call your attention to the possibility of a big touchdown for Tony Gonzalez. Should he catch one, he will tie Shannon Sharp and for uh, touchdown receptions all time by a tight end in the National Football League. Green for Hall to the one yard line. And they are picking on Osamwa. Over on that side. Gonzalez went back to the corner. You'll see 88 going to the back of the corner and they hit Dante up there in the flat. We're inside 45 seconds to go in the half. And Larry Johnson has checked back in as the Chiefs go in tight formation. Chris Wilson is the up back. Wilson goes one way, Johnson the other, touchdown Chiefs. Larry Johnson gets his 14th rushing touchdown. 40. Following Will Shields and Jason Dunn up into the hole, the up back Chris Wilson went to the right, Johnson to the left, and he walked in. Uh, Will following the right guy and Will Shields. He's, this is his 223rd game, all in Kansas City. Consecutive. All in Kansas. All in Kansas City. And Lawrence Tynes will try to boost it to a 10-point lead, and he does. With 40 seconds to play in the first half, the Chiefs have opened this one up, 17 to six, capitalizing on a couple of. Raider turnovers. The first one led to a uh, field goal by Lawrence Tynes, and this one, Jared Allen knocks free and comes up with yet again, and the Chiefs waste little time marching down the field. Larry Johnson completing the drive, taking it in from one yard out, giving the Chiefs a 17-6 lead. Gonzalez, too, got a good block inside. Yes, he does. Tony's a good blocker. He's given so much credit as a wide, you know, as a good receiver, but he's done a great job in blocking. And if you're going to score on the ground and be a Kansas City Chiefs, you have to be Larry Johnson. <laughs> That's the 30th consecutive rushing touchdown for the Chiefs by a guy named Larry, Larry Johnson. Johnson. He's a workhorse. Of course, he, yes, can, he, he caused a bit of trouble this week, too. <laughs> by saying he was basically tired of this stuff, um, tired of what the Chiefs were running, said things had to change. Well, uh, you, you caused know, a bit of a stir, and Herm didn't like it. You have to know Larry. You have to know him to understand him. You know, and he, I don't think he's most of the time does he really mean anything negative about it, but he, he gets frustrated. And then he, when he's frustrated, sometimes he says things he'd like to take back. Chris Carr takes this one on one hop. He comes back to the 40 yard line. Here's actually the quote. Let's listen in to what Johnson had to say last week after the loss to San Diego. Everybody's saying, oh, it's, it's fine, it's okay. I don't know who, who in their mind thinks this is okay, because this, this ain't, this is nothing, this is okay. I don't want to hear the video today. I'll talk to Larry, that's good enough. That's all I need to do. You guys are trying to make, well, here, here. Okay, well, oh, I'm just, he's fine, we're fine, everybody's fine. And True was, or not, it was perceived I, that Larry threw Herm and his offense under the bus. Well, I don't know that. I know I was there for two days, and it was a dead issue. It was not even mentioned. 
Moving to 30 seconds left in the first half. Walter throwing for Curry, throwing incomplete. I had a chance to talk with Herm yesterday, and I pointedly asked him about it. And, and Herm said, look, he, he's a young guy. He was frustrated because in a marquee matchup with Ladanian Tomlinson, he had been outgained. 199 to 84 and Herm said I talked to him I said look you just got to watch what you say because guys are waiting for it you got to watch it <laughs> Richard Lee in there in the backfield blocking for Walter Walter completing for the first time to Johnny Morant Morant with his second catch of the night and you see the flags falling as Beautiful Morant throw. gets to the 25 yard line he hit him in the crease between a rolled up corner and a safety and threw it just again he had time to throw the football. There was nobody around him he had time when he gets time he can throw it pretty well. Let's see what the call is. At 21 seconds. Illegal touching. Number 89 of the receiving team. He was legally chucked out of bounds. His first to touch it inbounds okay. makes it illegal. He touch. can't Five come back in. Repeat. Third down. You see at the bottom of your screen, he's coming off to the outside. Obviously, right there, he stepped out of bounds and then came back in. Thought he, you know, sometimes you're forced out a little bit that time, but he went more on his own. And not to correct Pete Morelli, he called it 89. 89 is, is Ronald Curry. It was not Curry. It was Morant. It was Morant, number 19. That's right, 19. Talk about hurting yourself. Hmm? Well, that's been the Raiders all year long. Um, it's not just the penalty. It's not just the turnovers. It's also the penalties, and, they, and they've done a good job cutting back on their penalties. Yeah, but it seems like it seems like everyone they've had has really been a crusher. Okay, we got a challenge from upstairs. Well, we heard the official step in and said, "Hang on." Got a challenge. That comes from the press box. Inside two minutes, all the um, reviews are called by the press box. So Pete Morelli will march back and go under the hood once again. At <laughs> stake here is a 37-yard gain. We'll see if we can get another look at it here. Get up there and Patrick Sertan. Yeah, oh, he's out of bounds. He yeah. stepped out of bounds. That yeah. one's pretty clear. Yep. That one's pretty clear. Yep. Easy to call. Not to belabor the point, but I just want to put a period on this Larry Johnson, Herm Edwards thing. Larry is a guy who had some tempestuous moments with you. Oh, yeah. When you were sure. in Kansas City, we all remember Diaper Game. Yeah, that was my fault. That and, was a bad, uh, bad, kind of, bad choice of words by me. And he's a sensitive kid. Yeah. He's a kid who, who, who speaks a lot. Um, oftentimes, his mouth outraces his head. Yeah. And I, basically, that's what Herm told him. Herm said, hey, you know what? We understand your frustration, um, but you got to watch what you say. You're now yeah. a professional. Um, things are taken. A lot of ways you got to watch it. Try to look at the big picture. And you're a star. And you know, you're a star. But I think a lot of it. He is such an intense competitor. That he, some. In replay, you cannot review a foul. The player did step out of bounds. The ruling on the field stands. Yeah. So, I guess there was some discussion that the reason he was out was because of an illegal chuck. He says you can't review a foul. I don't. I don't yeah. quite understand that, frankly, but. I'm not sure why they called him back under the hood, but in any event, 37-yard gain is negated. And we have 21 seconds left in a first half that saw the Raiders score the first points, but has seen the Chiefs march out to a 17-6 lead. The give this time to Richard Lee. He finds some running room, gets it to the 48. The Raiders still have a timeout in the bank. But so far, yes, they are going to call it. Thought for a moment following the run that they were just going to try to get it in at halftime. Speaking of which, coming up next, the Wendy's Halftime Show. Rich Eisen, Steve Mariucci, Deion Sanders, Marshall Falk. They're going to have first half highlights and analysis. And they'll look ahead to tomorrow, which has a couple of big games on tap. The Giants, for one, have a big one. They're going to be playing the New Orleans Saints. The Cowboys are going to be getting together with the Eagles, Eagles in another big game. And the Bengals are in Denver for what amounts to a big game for both those clubs. 
I'm guessing the Bengals managed to get into snowy Denver. <laughs> right? Didn't Denver open up? Denver finally got open. So we have 10 seconds left in the opening half. Raiders now out of timeouts, looking at third and three. Burnham. Walter throwing to Will Buchanan, fighting to get out of bounds and stop the clock, and he does at the 44-yard line with just four seconds left. Very loose zone prevent defense. You're going to be able to hit those kind of passes. And Janikowski has a cannon for a leg, but his career long is uh, 55. His season long is 51, and right now he'd be looking at uh, something in the neighborhood of 60 yards, 61 yards perhaps. So he'll stay on the sidelines, and we'll see what the final play of the half will be. Andrew Walter will toss this one into the end zone. Hail Mary. Nothing but white jersey Chiefs down there. <laughs> Jared Page is going to run it out. <laughs> There's a rookie running that out of there. This isn't a great idea. No. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see any black jersey down no, there. No, that's what the fans are saying. <laughs> You can hear them saying the same thing, only they're translating it to boo. <laughs> and with that, we'll go to the half with the Chiefs out in front, 17 to 6. Rich Eisen and the guys are coming along with the Wendy's halftime show. Chiefs leading the Raiders, 17 to 6. Welcome to the Wendy's Halftime Show. Getting in the middle of flavor along with uh, Marshall Falk and Deion Sanders and Steve Mariucci. My name is Rich Eisen. It's 17-6, the Kansas City Chiefs on top of their hated rivals, the Oakland Raiders. Let's show you how this thing broke down in the first quarter. Art Shell, obviously, with a lot of rumors about his uh, job status, swirling around the black hole here, and Trent Green and... Herman Edwards getting set for this game. They need to win to stay alive in the playoff race. And the Raiders getting the ball first. Andrew Walter getting the start finds Johnny Morant and Justin Fargus. Huggy Bears, son. That's with Huggy a, Bears, baby. With a first down run on second down. But it, the drive stalls and Sebastian Janikowski puts the Raiders up just three to nothing. Next play, uh, next uh, drive for the Chiefs. The fourth play thereof. Larry Johnson around the end for 10 yards. Three plays later, it's third and eight when Warren Sapp bags himself some Trent Green, but this is called an incomplete pass. So it's fourth and eight. Too long to attempt a field goal. The Chiefs go for it, and Sammy Parker picks this ball up off the turf. The flag is on the Raiders, who challenge it, but it's a good call. Right there is a really good catch. Looked like the ball hit the ground, but no challenge right there, and they first down. Third and goal, and it's Trent Green just shoehorning this puppy into Eddie Kennison for a touch. Down. Chiefs go up 7-3. They're up 10-6 late in the uh, first half. A minute 41 to go from midfield, and Andrew Walter gets the ball knocked loose as Jared Allen gets the trifecta. Sack, forced fumble, and recovery leading to a Larry Johnson touchdown, his 14th rushing touchdown of the year, and the Chiefs have firm control of this game. 17-6 as the Raiders have now gone 6 consecutive quarters without a single point scored. Andrew Walter has put the ball on the turf now 13 times this season as Kansas City got uh, 10 points off his two fumbles in this half. Marshall Falk, your thoughts? You know what? I'm just surprised that the Raiders offense not going for it on fourth down on the first on the first drive and on the second drive kicking field goals. I, I, I felt I feel like this game when you have a, you had a two and twelve season, you should take more chances. Obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs with an opportunity to make it to the playoffs, they're going for it on fourth down. It's, it's one thing to see this on television. But it's another thing to see this live. <laughs> I got a, a newfound respect for Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator of the Oakland Raiders, what he has to deal with, what he has to put up with, the defenses that he has to come up with, because they're constantly on the field. They're constantly been put in a position where they're backed up against the wall, and they really are doing a fine job, considering. They are. The defense is playing well. They have played pretty darn well, especially against the pass all year, and the special teams are playing well. It's just that offense that's given up the ball three times, the two fumbles turned into to short fields and points for Kansas City. 
The offensive line is an area I think they're going to have to address in the offseason because when you can't run the ball that well and you can't protect your quarterback, really it starts with the big guys up front. And they've had their share of injuries, but they need to improve it. The Raiders now on NFL worst, negative 19 on the turnover differential front. Hey, Christmas Eve, folks, tomorrow night, 8 Eastern time, a special two-hour edition of NFL Game Day. Join me, Santa Sanders, and Santa Mooch. Christmas Eve on NFL Network. It is 17 to 6, a rough core, a rough half for Andrew Walter. Trent Green has the Chiefs on top in a must-win game here in the black hole. More with the rest of it. Week 16 when we come back. As well as being a thirst-quenching soft drink. Dave. A Sprite is also a sort of goblin. This Sprite is not so refreshing at a festival. And it definitely hasn't got any taste. Try new Sprite Z. Great Sprite taste, zero added sugar. the two AFC wildcard teams as of this moment. That's a huge game with certainly huge ramifications. I talked to Chad Johnson. He called me the other night trying to make my phone ring on the air as if I wasn't professional. But he can't wait to go up against Champ Bailey. Last time he threw met two years ago, he had seven catches, over 100 yards touchdown. But Champ Bailey, one of the best, is the best in the business, also had an interception. I can't wait to see this matchup. And then over in the NFC, the Saints trying to wrap up a two seed and the Giants trying to stay in that sixth position. I really enjoy watching the New Orleans Saints play. They've turned it around like crazy. Sean Payton's done a great job, especially with that offense. It's exciting to watch how they used Drew Brees and Reggie Bush. However, they're going into New York. Mike Michael Strahan is back. He hasn't played much this year, but when he plays, they usually win. So it ought to be a good game. So uh, the Giants are holding the sixth spot in the NFC. It's something that the Kansas City Chiefs would love to hold by season's end. But in order for that to happen, they've got to continue with what's going on in the first half of this ball game tonight. So uh, uh, we're going to all be back here for the Home Depot post game you show. Sure? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Actually, the Black Hole's been great to us so far. They were screaming at us, but they're, that's all it is. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. They, they, one of them even gave me a candy cane saying we're not all that bad. I may not come back, bro. It's a touching, <laughs> touching Christmas story here. All right, 17 6 Chiefs leading. Second half next. Thank you for watching the Wendy's halftime show. Get in the middle of flavor, do Wendy's new double melt, and do what tastes right. TV Digital ist da. 14 Tage volles Programm. Top-Übersichtlichkeit im großen Format. Neu und einzigartig in Deutschland. Komplett mit allen Programmen von Kabel Digital Home. Plus ARD, RTL, Pro7 und Co. in einem Heft. Alle 31 Kabel Deutschland Programme mit Bewertung und allen Sendeterminen. Bestellen Sie jetzt Ihr Abo unter 0805 99 77 44. TV Digital. Das ist die Zukunft. the phone you fix a monthly bill so you always know what's coming you fix from t-mobile the celebration for the seahawks 30 years in the making the best team of the national football conference matt's got time plays it up over the top has a man wide open dj hackett touchdowns and they are going nuts Field. This guy is something else. Up for grabs. Ball is caught. Touchdown, Seahawks. The 
Seahawks made that look easy. Seattle, you've waited three decades. We're all going to the Super Bowl. Uh, Justin Fargus is running actually got on the board first with a field goal but then uh, Green came out marched Chiefs down the field through a touchdown pass to Eddie Kennison they added a field goal and then Jared Allen forcing the fumble here with his second fumble recovery paves the way Larry Johnson taking it in the Chiefs wind up leading the first half seven to six we came into this ball game talking about the Chiefs the Raiders woeful offense their problem with turnovers and we're seeing evidence of both tonight yeah both they actually have the numbers offensively but those two, two, two turnovers really, really have killed them they produced uh, the Chiefs produced 10 points off those two turnovers in the last interception I don't count that yeah you don't count the that ball one. game like that and, but and for the Raiders speaking of numbers um, there's bad news and there's worse news the bad news is they're trailing at halftime and they've lost 11 straight when trailing at halftime the worst news is all year long in the second half they've only scored 42 points there's always time to turn that around <laughs> there's always time to turn that around you know and they they're playing halfway decent football I think in, in terms of moving the ball and those kinds of things but they've hurt themselves with those turnovers and as we get set to start the second half we get an opportunity to tell you again that this game is being presented to you in HD I totally don't know what that is but I want it um, they're out in front and Janikowski will kick it away. Art Shell looking for some offense. Just 42 points in the second half. How bad is that, Dick? I can't. I don't have anything to compare it with. <laughs> Man. Dante Hall. Slipping at the 23. They'll probably give him the 24 before the Chiefs brought on the field. Larry Johnson. Will come back out along with Trent Green, and actually the Raiders have done a good job on Johnson tonight. They've, don't you think? They've kept him running toward the sideline. You know, even when he bounced inside, they were trying to push him to the sideline. The good run that he had was when he started to the left, got outside, and then ran his own reverse, came all the way back, and made a good run. His opposite number, Fargus, actually has 20 more yards on the ground. That's a career high for Justin Fargus. He gets stronger though as the game goes. Larry does. And the numbers say Fargus does not. Good point. Johnson spinning out of one tackle and crossing to about the 33-yard line. Stuart Schweiger coming up to stop it. See, he is so strong. He has great balance. He can make the he can make the dramatic cuts that a smaller back can make. But here he is at 230 pounds and 4.38 speed. But you know the other thing about Larry that I've always uh, appreciated, he he runs angry. He really can get himself in an angry frame of mind. Herman Edwards would second that, I'm sure, this week. Johnson trying for the first down, but Warren Sapp was there. It looked like Michael Huff came up and got a piece of it, too. Warren Sapp is a big guy, though. He's playing, they say, at about 310 pounds. He's play, played heavier than that. Here he is on the number 90 and working there with number 76 there. John Wellborn. No place to go. That Huff's going to be a good player, isn't he, Dick? Yes, he is. He's their number one draft pick out of Texas. Seventh player taken. Larry Johnson skipping this one outside, crossing the 40, oh. and being bowled out the 45-yard line. We've got our first flag of the second half. There's a bunch of Raiders who are holding. going the other way. Real holding. good. Number 89. Offense, 10-yard penalty remains. Third down. That's Jason Dunn, who is listed as the um, second tight end. Yeah, and he's a big, strong, physical blocker. See, he gets that arm right there. His left arm has got him by the shoulder pad up on top. And Larry running with great patience at that time. Rather than flying up in there blindly, he gets up in there and then again bounces to the outside. Is that to something get the he's first learned, down. Dick, or did he come in?